We're at the World 3D Expo 2, and I'm with uh, stereographic great 3D <laughs> stereopath Lenny Lipton. How do you feel being here? Well, I, uh, I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm more intrigued by the screenings than I thought. I've learned a lot. I'm, I'm learning a lot. It's helped me think about the technical issues involved, not only in stereoscopic cinematography, but in projection. So one of my hypotheses has been overthrown, and I even wrote about it in my book. I came to the conclusion that projection was the death of the medium, but I can see now it was a combination of projection and cinematography. <laughs> what 1950s 3D film most impressed you as a youth when you saw it? Well, the first film that I saw was Buona Devil, and my mom took me to see it in uh, Manhattan. Perhaps it was the Criterion Theater, I don't remember, but I, I, we used to go to uh, Midtown Manhattan to see movies, and I saw Buona Devil. Uh, at the same time, there were 3D comic books being published, so that worked its way into my mind. That's what I want to hear. 3D comic books? Yes. They, were, they were very influential. Buona Devil had a lot of convergence with that natural vision system. What, what's your feeling about convergence? I haven't now? seen uh, Buona Devil in, uh, let's say, 50 years, um, and uh, more than 50 years. I think it's very important uh, that the cameras be adjusted, not with towing, but rather with uh, lateral shifts or recentration of the lenses. Towing is, uh, I think, leading to problems in these. It isn't in and of itself that it's such a bad thing to angle the lenses in. You know, people argue that that's the way the human eye works, but that's not a good analogy. The problem is when you've got frame line drift and you've got uh, just a bunch of problems, by the time it all adds up, it's not pleasant viewing. And if you'll notice, Ray, everybody in this theater who knows anything is sitting in the back. They're all sitting in the balcony and they're all sitting in the last row. The Sabu Cat, the organizers, reserved row is the last row in the theater. And why is that? That's because retinal disparity is a function of distance and the uh, linear parallax on the screen. Everybody knows if they sit close, they're going to have a problem with their eyes. So, so have you seen Glass Web? The film I've never seen tonight? this film. Um, I, I've been getting just a rush of ideas from uh, coming here. You know, my job is designed the stereoscopic projection system for real D to make it better and better. Um, I'm deeply concerned about uh, live action photography, which is going to happen any moment. You know, the guys at uh, Sony Image Works and at Disney really have it down. Um, Rob Engel and Phil McNally um, have, I can see they're just getting better and better and smarter and smarter. The images are terrific. And of course, there is, there is no excuse for not making a perfect CGI stereoscopic movie. They just have the parallax balance down. They've, they've got it worked out. When you look at a real D projected movie with these guys' content, it's a pleasurable experience. I, I've come here at several several shows with my family, you know, and my kids and my wife have seen many movies in the real D theater. And here they're complaining. And you know, this is not what 3D should be like. Now, I'm not saying this is a terrible experience because in many ways it's a great experience. I'm here analyzing what I'm seeing and a lot of what I'm seeing is very, very good. But you, you can't, this is, system is not a product. You've got two projectionists in the booth who are working very, very hard to make the thing work. The good thing about what they've done is they've eliminated the uncertainties with regard to projection from the equation. Yes. And you know, Miss Sadie Thompson is actually a very good movie. And I did not, I could not remember what a really good actress uh, Rita Hayworth was. She had a lot of sparkle and drive. She was a good actress. Yeah. She wasn't, you know, just a good-looking girl. She could act. She could sing and dance. Too. And you know, there were my kids uh, uh, noted that there was n no, there were no off-screen effects. There was nothing special. There was no real reason for that movie they thought to be shot in 3D. And yet, I was fascinated by it. That's what Curtis Bernhardt, the director, thought. Yeah, but I just, but looking at it was such a pleasure. It was, it was fairly well shot. I and found just the, that too. the shots in the jungle and the, sh the interiors, they had a. a it was beautiful. It's hard. It was tangible. Yeah. I, I was very involved in it. I thought the story was good and the acting was good and the 3D was beautiful. It was easy to look at. It was easy to look at, especially from the last row. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go in? Yeah, sure. See a movie? <laughs>
Okay. Thank you, Lenny. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ray. Hey, Ray. <laughs>